Hello, and well met! Green and Garb is thrilled to bring you our dark fantasy campaign, Prophecy of Shadows, set straight in the Ravenlock domains of dread, the heart of darkness. As always, if you would like to see more of what we do here, please, please consider subscribing, <laughs> leaving a comment down below, and... SMITE THAT LIKE BUTTON! To help us appease the dark algorithm gods. We last left our Warriors of Light, bereft and betrayed by Xavier and Xander, who revealed themselves to be a mighty Demogorgon, wielding the Rod of Oblivion, a tool of the Abyss. The Demogorgon <laughs> ripped portals in the fabric of reality across planes, realms, and time before vanishing in a whirlwind of darkness. Thunder booms and lightning crackles as the swirling darkness dissipates from the spot where the Demogorgon, your former friends, Xavier and Xander, once stood, vanished into the night. You look above you and see images through the veil. Portals created by the Rod of Oblivion are seeping sickly tendrils from the Shadowfell, corrupting realms across the multiverse. Amalia lays unconscious. Gwynestri enters the room. How, how could we let this happen? How could I let this happen? I don't know. I didn't, uh, I just, we didn't uh, let it happen. They obviously uh, just knew stuff we didn't. <clears throat> Um, this whole time, I'm gonna go down and be next to my mom. So I'm gonna have her ar like have her body cradled in my arms. Sure. She's stabilized and breathing yeah. normally, but totally unconscious. Just seems absolutely exhausted. They played us this whole time. I was too wrapped up in my own problems to see. We all were. Yes. We ran right into them and they said, oh, look at, look at this group. We can use them for what we need. Listen, as upset as I am, I need to make sure my mom's okay. So, I, I can't help her. I'm pretty limited on like the healing I can do. Wait, wait, um, and I'm gonna sit down next to you and I'm gonna bring out Amalia's candles and like light them oh, that's great around reality. her. Um, we have those berries still, right? I have like one. Okay, I'm gonna start digging through my bag. I'm gonna get the last berry that I have. Here, I have more. Um, oh, you do? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. great. I have some as well. Use those so that you okay. use the last one. Okay, well then I put, put it back in my bag. Okay. Mm. It okay. doesn't appear that she needs to be stabilized oh. anymore. <clears throat> okay. So the berry wouldn't necessarily be, <clears throat> she, she's just exhausted. She just needs from, to rest. Yeah, she just needs to rest. Um, I don't think we should stay here. Not in like, Hirsham's throne room. Do we follow the boys? Throne room. Oh. Hey, what's Gwyn yeah. looking like? Gwyn, despite having defeated Hirsham, still appears to be a satyr. Hmm. I approach her. My love, are you all right? I, I'm afraid I understand the truth now. Why I and the other elves of New Arvindor have remained satyrs. Do you think Despite this was not Hirsham's magic? No, it is but it is a more powerful magic. Is he or shows in everybody's bag? <laughs> I remember now. That fucker gets around. Oh, God. <laughs> but in a moment of vanity of sick pride, he confessed to me the nature of his pact with my brother, Gamora. It is terrible, vicious sorcery even if Hirsham himself has killed the magic that twisted and captured New Arvindor and our people can never be broken. 
while Gamoro lives. But I have not seen my brother in nearly a hundred years. Gwen. <laughs> it's me. No, no, you don't have to do this. Gamoro. Gwynistry. You came back for us. I'm so sorry. There is nothing to forgive. But I can help. And she embraces you. I fear that I was not... I allowed vanity to get in my way. I... I know that mother and father promoting me never felt right, but... I let power get in my way. You deserved it. You were always so smarter than me. So much better. I cheated. You didn't. I took shortcuts. You didn't. It's why we're here. It's because of me. I'm sorry, but I will make it right. No, I, I can't ask you to do that. I have to. No, you don't. Gum, after all we've been through? <clears throat> Gum, we're not gonna let you sacrifice yourself, so. You're a different person now. Yes. I think that pff, technically the old Gum has that. Wouldn't that be one of those nice like, little loopholes, you know? <clears throat> I walk over yeah. <laughs> and I take both Gwyn and Gum's hand. You are still my love and you are still my brother. It doesn't matter what you look like. We are still family. I can't, I can't lose anyone else. After all that we've been through, I know that this may have started because of something that you did with with Tirsham, but he tricked you. For what it's worth, he tricked a lot of people. So, he, he was a trickster. It's kind of in the title. <clears throat> yeah. I... My concern is not the form in which I appear, but for our people, for this place. Until Hirsham's magic is broken, we may very well remain here forever. You cannot leave with us. I, I know that this kingdom, it was our home, but can we find a new one? Can we leave together, all of us? Koxana, this is our home. But more importantly, these are our people, and I have been entrusted to protect them. And I will not leave until I know that they are safe. You'll have to forgive me. I've spent a long time without our people, without you. I've become selfish. Well, that's not true. That's not true at all. So are you, are you saying that you don't think you can leave this place, Gwen? I don't know. In terms of magic. But I do know that until I know that these people are safe, I will not leave them abandoned. Well, they're not going to be safe no matter where they go because of the <sighs> twins. You're as hard-headed as, as head. <laughs> you're as hard-headed as ever. Of course, but I understand. <clears throat> uh, I think we should probably move. I don't think it's safe to stay here. Gwyn. Yes. I know that when all of this happened, 
I was not there to protect you. And I'm very sorry for that. But I must ask if I may leave you once more so that we can sort all of this out. But this time, I will be back as soon as I can. Not a year from now, not a hundred years from now, as soon as I possibly can, I will be back for you, our kingdom, and our people. You could not have known what was going to happen. And it was I would job. never blame you. It was and my he... duty to protect you. No one can protect another in the face of such darkness. Not always. And I know that he will be back, and whether it is a year or it is another hundred, I will wait for you. And with that, one of the portals starts to spill out something twinkling moon dust. <laughs> Friends, look! And then a blast of radiant energy pushes through the portal. <laughs> blinding you all momentarily. A radiant woman with long limbs, perfect and exquisite beauty, lime green eyes, long ivory hued hair that falls past her knees, floats downwards, moon dust trailing behind her diaphanous robes resembling dappled moonlight. All is stardust and light. Warriors of light, at last I have found you. Though only due to a disastrous burst of dark energy, this frightful omen led me through the impenetrable fog of the domains of dread. I am here because you are the only ones who can fight back the night. Shah has taken her earthly form and will plunge the multiverse into darkness if she is not defeated. What's more, Willa, my child. Hello again. Your mother will die if she stays here much longer. I must return her to your home in the Feywilds immediately. Can you do that, please? Of course. But you, warriors of light, have one task left. You must follow Shah to Barovia, the domain of Strahd, and retrieve the Rod of Oblivion. When it is wielded only by one marked by Shah, it is that of darkness, a tool of ultimate destruction. But you, Willa, you have my mark, the mark of the moon, the blessing of light. Only in your hands will the rod be of the four moons, a beacon of light and hope to all those who suffer. I'll find it. 
I'll get it back. But once I've served my purpose, where does the rod go? I've been marked, but for how long? The rod of oblivion, the rod of the four moons, two sides of the same coin, is an artifact that must be taken from this realm. Once its powers seal the portals, once the darkness is ended, if you will it, Willa, it can be destroyed, and never again will it fall into the hands of those who wish to do harm. But only if you wish it. I'll destroy it. But there is more. Warriors of light. If you are to defeat the earthly avatar of Shah, this Demogorgon, you will need more power than you currently wield. Much more. Salune holds out her hand and radiant moonlight engulfs your bodies. You slowly lift about a foot above the ground, encased in this warm, <coughs> magical light. Because I'm tight. <laughs> it's all that moon dust. <laughs> right I know, here. right? <laughs> you get used to it. <laughs> and you gain the benefits of two levels. <laughs> Gum, Gamoro, step forward. Are we still floating? We no. slowly, <laughs> down. We slowly like float swim. back down. <laughs> to you, I give the waxing crescent, a holy weapon forged to protect those who pray to the moons for safety and harmony. It carries within it the power of moonlight and can summon its full lunar potential when the wielder brings it to bear. She holds out her hands and produces a sparkling glaive. <gasps> nice. Lace runs down the base of it. Full lunar potential is my new band name, Dibs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... Beautiful. This glaive is blessed with the divine powers of the moon. Use it wisely. I will. That you may right your wrongs. Thank you. Alvi, to you I give the brooch of the blue moon. Even when the moon disappears, its presence can be felt in this world. Crafted during the rarest of blue moons, this brooch provides its wearer similar opportunities to vanish. <laughs> Use it well. It's just a really it's, big brooch. It's a really big brooch. <laughs> I was saying it's just like her whole shield. body. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I will use it to keep my friends safe. Korixana, for you, the moon blade. This sword is one of radiance. It will serve you well in the battles to come. And she unsheathes this massive great sword, glowing with radiant light, up and down. It like pulsates and hums. It 
it's nearly weightless. That's this very you. Lighter than my than my rapier that I used to use. Wow. <laughs> this is magnificent. Thank you. Willa, my Present. child. That's me. Step forward <clears throat> and hold out your hand. Is that because of the tattooed order? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> your tattoo begins to blow, begins to glow <laughs> with a blinding radiance. You now wield the full power of the moon in your hands. Use it wisely. You must be the leader you were meant to be if you are to defeat the Avatar of Shah. And take this. The Penumbra Eclipse. She holds out like a glistening, heavy set of heavy armor. And it sort Ooh. of like floats towards you and wraps around your body and it, like you're instantly donned in this sort of sparkling, glowing, radiant armor. The power of the moon's protection and defense was suffused into this armor to keep its wearer safe as well as those under their protection. Crafted during a full solar eclipse, this armor has a similar appearance to the moon. There is one last caveat. As due to the sealing influence and power of my sister, Mistress of Night, Shah. The only way you may enter Barovia now is through no means known by mortals. Neither portal nor ship will be enough. That is to say, only a plainer shift will allow you to arrive in the land of Strahd. Should you fail to defeat the darkness, you will never be able to return home. If there is anything left of what you now call home, should you not succeed. So you must tell me, is this a fight you wish to see through to the end? My warriors of light, Uh, I'm still holding my mom, so I take a look at her and brush her purple-blue hair out of her face. Yes. For my family, I'll do anything. And Amalia's eyes sort of just flutter open, and she just reaches out a hand. Mom! And touches your face ever so gently. I'm so proud of you, my dear. Thank you. I'll be home soon. I know. Are you ready? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, you go first. I'm gonna get out of my bag just a piece of paper really quickly. I'm gonna write them down. Um, what happened to the twins? Uh, I know they're Char's avatar, I guess, but were they ever really there? Are they savable? This I do not know. A veil has been lifted over the ones you once called Xavier and Xander. 
I fear that they are beyond my reach. Are they actually twins, or are they? Eh, never mind. I think that they're, I mean, they were real people, right? They were just a vessel for, they became a vessel for Shar, it sounds like. So, presumably they, beyond, they were actual be beyond people. beyond your reach, but they may not be beyond ours. <laughs> of that, I cannot be certain. But we must try. We must. We if must. you should fail, if even an ounce of the energy imbued by Shah within them remains, the realms will never be safe. The rod of the four moons is capable of many things. You will know what is right. I hate it when people say that. If it comes to it, we will do what we must. Yes. Indeed. Now. I am afraid I must leave you, my warriors of light. I cannot remain on this plane any longer. Be steadfast in your mission. The fate of the world, the fate of all that is good, the fate of light depends on you. Wait. Give this to my father. She sort of tucks it into her billowing robes. Thank you. And then she reaches down and slowly lifts up Amalia into her arms. And the glowing light that is always radiating around her body begins to pulsate and grow and expand until all that is around you suffused by a blinding radiance. You feel yourself being thrust through dimensions, through space and time. <laughs> and that is where we're going to end. What? A little session for today. <laughs> this was part one of three of the finale of Prophecy of Shadows. Thank you so much for following along with us. <laughs> We're gonna have a whole bunch more for you very soon. And <laughs> <laughs> that's what I've got. <laughs> so please, uh, leave us a comment, uh, smite that like button, and three. What's the third thing? What? He was counting. Oh, I was, okay. I was doing, <laughs> like, I was doing, and a one, and a two, and a. <laughs> and, uh, subscribe. Yeah. So, yeah, there it is. <laughs> we will, uh, we'll see you next time. I know this was a short one, but, uh, we had, uh, we had to split it up a little bit, so we'll see you next time. Oh, God or the battle or battles of the century. Actually, no combat. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> no combat. Yeah, I think it's going to be fine. It's going to be all good. Okay. Fine. We're going to solve it through diplomacy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for today. Bye. Bye.